Right now it is mostly finance apps that are built on Ethereum aside from NFTs. And I'm wondering what is the killer app for Ethereum that could lead to widespread adoption, much like email was for the internet? I think there's a few candidates. Um, so I mean, DeFi is obviously one of them. Um, I think uh, the like blockchain-based financial things have always been attractive because uh, like the traditional uh, financial system just sucks more than traditional centralized tech, right? Like. If I send an email to um, you know someone in uh, Guatemala, then they're going to receive it in one second. With, with finance, you can't even say that. A lot of uh, people and companies even today just to use cryptocurrency to send uh, money internationally. Outside of finance, uh, yeah, think uh, w one interesting um, area that I where I think blockchains might go. You notice some um, that in order to access your assets in Ethereum, you need to have an account. We're g getting to the point where there is a lot of work that's been done on making these accounts very secure. And so instead of just being accounts that hold money, like these, these turn into like full, fully blown profiles, right? Uh, and, and once you have profiles, then you can start doing decentralized social media on top of that. The social and financial things that you that you can do with that, like even working together, um, is something that. I think uh, could be really big. Now, whether Bitcoin, Ethereum, or the blockchain really are changing the world seems to be an ongoing debate. Is crypto the future or is it a fad? I think it's the future that contains fads, much like the internet was the future and the internet contained fads. Um, you know, there's definitely specific kinds of applications that do get overhyped from uh, time to time, like um, ICOs back in 2017, and then I mean, there's certain kinds of DeFi right now. Um, but at the same time, there's other DeFi projects that really are uh, valuable. There's a combination of both, right? And figuring out which is which is even maybe it's something that's difficult to see ahead of time, and it's something that you know we as an ecosystem are going to find out. So the crypto skeptics, many people um, that are, you know, are admired in the financial world, Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, are they just wrong? A lot of them have definitely been uh, just wrong already, right? Uh, like they uh, expected even back in 2013 to 15, at least some of them, to see uh, blockchains and cryptocurrency fail and go down to, to zero in price and just not get any more interest uh, completely. And even today, they've already been uh, far more successful than uh, any of them expected. So I can see how people in uh, traditional finance, or at least some of them, can be inclined to kind of not see the value of uh, blockchain-based finance immediately. There's a lot of people, even in traditional banks, that see the value that blockchains provide and have been uh, trying to come up with things and work with them. One of them is Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey recently announced Square is creating a new business focused on decentralized financial services based on Bitcoin, using Bitcoin. What have you learned about Jack Dorsey's plans? Does it seem like he's building something that sounds a lot like Ethereum? I'm skeptical about um, these uh, decentralized uh, finance on top of uh, Bitcoin type of projects. So basically because like the difference between uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? This is, uh, uh, is um, that on Ethereum, there's like native functionality that allows you to essentially directly put either ETH or Ethereum based assets into these smart contracts into these lockboxes when where there's then like arbitrary conditions of any kind that uh, can then govern how those assets get released bitcoin does not have that functionality to the same extent like jack is basically going to have to essentially create his own system that enforces those rules and then on the bitcoin layer the bitcoins will just have to be owned by probably a multi-sig wallet controlled by like either jack or just or the participants in the system it looks similar but it'll end up being something with a much weaker trust model Right. Like, I, I really think that like this is the whole reason why Ethereum started as an independent system in the first place. Right. Like there's there's technical limits to your ability to a kind of graft new functionality onto a system that's uh, not powerful enough to support that new functionality. Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg is also making some big moves behind the metaverse. And, I, I, you know, what do you make of them wading into this decentralized world? Could they replicate some of the same problems that we see in Facebook and Twitter today. 
I think uh, Mark is clearly trying to figure out what the next stage after the internet is and like actually get into it and create it. Um, but you know, before the rest of uh, the, I get the world goes in some different direction and Facebook is sort of, uh, you know, left in the dust and, be and becomes one of these uh, kind of previous generation old world companies. Um, so, you know, we, we've seen Facebook try to get into the crypto space uh, with uh, Libra, though, I mean, I think in, you know, in the end, like Libra did end up uh, being possibly the wrong approach um, because like the, the problem that someone like Facebook has, right, is that a lot of people mistrust them. And so building their own platform, like I know, I, I know they tried really hard to create something that's a consortium with all these different um, industry participants, but at the same, like even that was not enough, right? And there's just a huge amount of mistrust of uh, them. But uh, with the metaverse, I guess uh, the thing that happened during the uh, pandemic is that we've basically very quickly switched from a world where the physical world was people's uh, kind of primary center of um, experience and uh, the internet was this new add-on to a world where the internet really is the center of people's experiences. And so we basically are spending most of our time in a virtual world. And the question is just like, what level of quality does that virtual world have? So Ethereum in five years and 10 years, where is it? Uh, I mean, hopefully running the metaverse, uh, but I, I guess we'll see how it goes. You've got a lot of people out there, a lot of people who are trying to understand cryptocurrency, who are placing their bets. What's your prediction for Bitcoin? Does it replace the dollar? Does it ex exist in, in 50 years or is it something else? And then similarly, what's your prediction for Ethereum? Because a, a lot of investors are choosing to hold both or one or the other. You know, I think uh, replacing the dollar completely is unlikely, um, just uh, because like there's things that the dollar provides, like uh, price stability, for example, that Bitcoin is uh, not going to provide. Like I think even in a theoretical world where um, the U.S. dollar collapses, like even then, I think uh, Bitcoin is not going to be able to provide the level of like, stability that users and businesses expect to be able to set prices in. Um, and in that kind of world, like, we, we would need something else. Like, we, like it could be decentralized stable coins. It could be something else, but we'll see. Um, so, but at the same time, I think cryptocurrency can still have a very powerful and important role alongside uh, existing uh, currencies. Ethereum seems to have this reputation of being a community of creative engineering types who like rainbows and cats and mythical creatures. I know you have some fun t-shirts yourself. Is that a fair depiction of the community? Uh, it, the community is a diverse place and, um, you know, it has many different kinds of people and, you know, it definitely uh, ha has uh, its, uh, f its fair share of cat people and, do and uh, dog people and unicorn people as well. And I think that's awesome. And I think uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's really healthy to, uh, I guess, uh, not take yourself uh, too seriously. And that's uh, definitely something that the the Ethereum community is, strives to do, you know, remember that uh, the world is supposed to be a place to have fun too. All right, Vitalik Buterin, inventor of Ethereum, thank you so much for joining us.